Our southern neighbour Sri Lanka is facing its worst economic downturn since 1948. Lengthy blackouts, record inflation and acute food and fuel shortage for months have sparked increasing discontent among people, leading to nationwide protests against the Rajapaksha government. Many of the elements of the Sri Lankan crisis find similarities in Pakistan too, where inflation is galloping, the Pakistani rupee, like its Sri Lankan counterpart, is struggling, and both fiscal and current account deficits have ballooned beyond control. Likewise in North, the economy of Nepal also seems to be spiraling down, prices are soaring, and the foreign exchange reserves diving nose down. Amid efforts by the country to reduce imports, experts warn things in the economy could be on the verge of collapse. And eastwards, panic has also gripped Myanmar over the growing likelihood of a Sri Lanka-type economic collapse after the country's central bank called on all citizens this month to convert their foreign currency holdings and remittances received from abroad into the local currency within a day. Myanmar's foreign reserves are also believed to have dwindled sharply and foreign debt has escalated over the last couple of years. So while there are a number of domestic factors as well as the pandemic causing economic distress in these countries, one thing running common between them is that they're all part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Through BRI, China has been investing heavily in building ports, roads, bridges, dams, power stations, rail networks, etc., overwhelming these countries with huge amounts of debts that are not sustainable. China is one of the world's largest creditors, lending billions of dollars to developing countries for infrastructure projects under its Belt and Road Initiative. But some critics accuse China of using debt traps to gain leverage over these countries, forcing them to cede control of key assets or align with Beijing's interests when they can't repay their loans. Is this a reality or a myth? And what are the implications for the global order? In this video, we will explore the facts and controversies behind China's debt diplomacy. China has been lending large sums of money to governments in Asia, Africa, and Europe for the past 10 years, increasing its worldwide influence through large-scale infrastructure projects and ranking among the biggest creditors in the world. According to recent research, Beijing has now expanded its role as a significant emergency rescue lender to those same nations, many of whom are having difficulty making their debt payments. And what do we know about China's lending? Between 2008 and 2021, China spent $240 billion bailing out 22 countries that are almost exclusively debtors in Xi Jinping's signature Belt and Road infrastructure project, including Argentina, Pakistan, Kenya, and Turkey. But the issue is, China's economic clout is no secret. But the inner workings of its lending practices remain shrouded in mystery. Like a modern-day financial ninja, China's operations and transactions lurk in the shadows hidden from public view. In a world where information is power, China's central bank guards its data like a vault of mysteries, refusing to disclose crucial details about loans and currency swap agreements with foreign central banks. What lies behind these hidden numbers and unspoken agreements? Is it a strategic maneuver to retain a competitive advantage or a deliberate choice to operate outside the norms of traditional financial transparency? The absence of data on loans and currency swap agreements with foreign central banks leaves financial observers pondering the true extent of China's financial influence. According to research, less than 5% of China's global credit portfolio went toward aiding debt-stricken nations in 2010. By 2022, that percentage had increased to 60%, showing Beijing's expansion of rescue efforts and retreat from the infrastructure projects that had distinguished its Belt and Road campaign in the early 2010s. The PBOC's Swap Line Network, which refers to agreements between central banks to exchange currencies, provided $170 billion of the overall $240 billion in rescue funds. Chinese state-owned banks and businesses, notably oil and gas firms, provided the remaining $70 billion in loans. According to the research, the majority of the nations using China's exchange lines were experiencing severe financial crises that were made worse by the COVID-19 outbreak. This gave China the opportunity to exact its debt trap diplomacy. But what exactly is this debt trap diplomacy? And what are the controversies behind it? 
The China debt trap diplomacy is the controversial practice of providing large loans to developing countries for infrastructure projects with the alleged intention of creating a cycle of debt and dependency on China. The practice of debt trap diplomacy has come under intense scrutiny, with critics accusing China of using its financial muscle to create a network of dependent nations beholden to its economic might. Like a spider weaving its web, China's loans may seem like a boon for developing nations, but they come with a catch. If a country is unable to repay the loans, China may use that as leverage to gain control over the country's resources, land, or strategic assets. The consequences of the cunning mechanism of debt for equity swaps are dire, as even a nation like Laos finds itself forced to surrender control over its precious national electric grid when its debt soars to a staggering 26% of its GDP. In this intricate dance of power and control, China's debt trap policy reveals its true colors. Like a predator ensnaring its prey, China leverages its vast riches and formidable power to manipulate the sovereignty of weaker nations. The debt trap springs shut, ensnaring unsuspecting nations in a web of indebtedness and leaving them vulnerable to China's authority and influence. For poorer nations, the burden of debt looms large, leaving them vulnerable to pressure from China as a result of its lending practices. Accusations fly through the air accusing China of leveraging its lending practices to exert pressure on vulnerable nations. Yet, like a defiant warrior, China dismisses these claims as nothing more than a myth, attributing them to a calculated attempt by certain Western powers to tarnish its name. In a bold proclamation, China stands firm, asserting that not a single nation has fallen into debt as a result of borrowing from its coffers. The stage is set for a showdown of conflicting narratives, where the stakes couldn't be higher. As the accusations ricochet and the counterarguments unfold, the world watches with bated breath, searching for the truth amidst the fog of competing perspectives. But how has China been luring many Asian, African, and Pacific nations into a debt trap? China, a rising global power, stands accused of ensnaring Asian, African, and Pacific nations in a treacherous debt trap by employing a combination of enticing investments and its ambitious Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative, a colossal endeavor launched in 2013, captivates the imagination with its grand vision. Like a modern-day Silk Road, it seeks to connect continents, weaving a vast network of roads, railways, ports, pipelines, and more. China presents it as a win-win cooperation, promising increased trade, development, and mutual understanding among the participating nations. Yet amidst the grandeur of this ambitious initiative, whispers of skepticism emerge. Critics contend that behind China's promises lie hidden motives. They argue that the Belt and Road Initiative serves as a strategic tool for China, a means to expand its geopolitical influence and safeguard its economic interests. One of the main criticisms is that China offers loans to developing countries that are too large to repay, with high interest rates and opaque terms. When these countries face difficulties servicing their debts, China allegedly pressures them to make concessions on issues such as natural resources, land rights, political alignment, or strategic assets. These loans, too colossal to repay, are laden with exorbitant interest rates and shrouded in opaque terms, trapping nations in a web of indebtedness. And when the burden of these unsurmountable debts becomes overwhelming, China allegedly reveals its true colors. Like a puppeteer pulling the strings, it exerts pressure on struggling nations, demanding concessions on vital issues. Natural resources become bargaining chips, land rights hang in the balance, and even the alignment of political interests is called into question. Let's check out some countries that have fallen into this debt trap. Among the countries caught in its web, Sri Lanka takes center stage, providing a striking example of the consequences that unfold when debt becomes a weapon of influence. In 2017, Sri Lanka found itself at a crossroads, entangled in a financial quagmire. Unable to repay the loans it had received from China for the construction of the strategically positioned in Hambantota, Sri Lanka faced a daunting decision. As the pressure mounted, Sri Lanka made a fateful choice, handing over the port to a state-owned Chinese company on a 99-year lease. This bold move reverberated across the international stage, raising eyebrows and sparking debates about the extent of China's influence. The Hambantota port, 
nestled near a crucial shipping route, held not just economic value, but also potential military significance for China. Critics argue that in its desperation to address its debt woes, Sri Lanka unwittingly sacrificed its sovereignty and strategic interests to China's growing influence. The repercussions of this decision resonated far beyond Sri Lanka's shores, casting a shadow over the delicate balance between economic progress and national security. Pakistan emerges as a key player in this high-stakes narrative, with its intricate relationship with China casting a spotlight on the perils of excessive indebtedness. According to the authoritative voice of the International Monetary Fund IMF, Pakistan finds itself ensnared in a web of external debt towering at a staggering $116.3 billion by the close of 2020. This colossal burden amounts to a significant 44% of Pakistan's GDP, a statistic that sends shockwaves through the corridors of power. At the heart of this intricate tale lies China, a pivotal player in Pakistan's financial landscape, as Pakistan's largest bilateral creditor, accounting for a formidable 28% of its total external debt, China's influence looms large. The debts owed to China reached an astonishing $32.9 billion predominantly attributed to projects linked to the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC. As the world looks on, Fascinated and concerned, the intricacies of this financial entanglement become apparent. Pakistan finds itself walking a tightrope, balancing economic development aspirations with the consequences of over-reliance on a single creditor. With a weakened fiscal position, dwindling foreign exchange reserves, and a sluggish economy, Pakistan finds itself navigating treacherous waters as it struggles to meet its towering debt obligations. Other countries trapped in this debt web are Djibouti and Zambia. Djibouti is a small country in the Horn of Africa that hosts several foreign military bases, including the only permanent U.S. base in Africa. Djibouti owes about 80% of its external debt to China, mostly for infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative. In 2018, Djibouti seized control of a container terminal from a Dubai-based company and handed it over to a Chinese state-owned company, sparking a legal dispute and diplomatic tensions. Some analysts warn that Djibouti could lose its strategic autonomy and become a pawn of China's interest in the region if it cannot manage its debt burden. Also, Zambia is a landlocked country in southern Africa that relies heavily on copper exports. Zambia owes about 30% of its external debt to China, mostly for infrastructure projects such as roads, airports, and power plants. There were reports that Zambia was considering handing over its state-owned power company to China as collateral for its loans. Although both governments deny this, some observers fear that Zambia could lose control of its natural resources and economic sovereignty to China if it defaults on its debt obligations. So as these countries struggle with the challenges and opportunities presented by their relationship with China, one thing is certain. The future of the world's developing nation hangs in the balance, with the fate of generations to come resting on the outcome of this struggle. What do you think about China's debt trap? Don't hesitate to let us know what you think in the comments section. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest news about what's happening in the world today. Thanks for watching.